morning. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Coffee. As you can see, this is not Krista Rizzo. This is David again. <laughs> Every time a guest cancels last minute, I text David and say, how fast can you get here so that I can still have a show? So <clears throat> thank you to David for pinch hitting yet again mm -hmm. for another canceled guest. Uh, we are going to reschedule uh, Ms. Rizzo, who's going to be here later on this month. So, so yeah, we will we will get to that. But for today, today uh, David is back with us, and I decided to call this episode the Funk episode <laughs> because we have both been in a funk, and not a good funk, not like Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch funk. It has been a bad funk. So. I guess we'll get it. I feel like this is going to be a depressing episode. <clears throat> if you have any questions for us, please feel free to leave them in the chat because we are just winging it <laughs> completely today. So we're just rambling about whatever we feel like rambling about. And if you have any questions for us, yeah, let us know. That'll give us something to talk about. So we would appreciate it. All right. Let's start with you. How are you doing? Why are you funky, David? Mm, it's just been... I mean, it, I think it's a continuation of just the last couple months just still can't kind of get out of that funk and i guess that's maybe a good question is how do you what have other people who've been in these funks what do they do to help themselves get out of it you know um i know for me it's just i've just gotta i've gotta be um i've gotta be diligent about uh getting out and doing things like right now you know my soccer is starting to pick up some a little bit and i've been fighting an injury but i have less desire to go out and do it when it's cold or when it's late at night mm -hmm. and stuff like that and i always enjoy it when i'm out there but um kind of forcing myself holding myself accountable to get out and do stuff um is something that i've got to get a little bit better at for myself to because when i do get out and i do do stuff it takes my mind off of things and and i do enjoy what i'm doing yeah but, it's just the getting um, yourself up and out that is the challenge and, yes yeah yeah big time. i agree but yeah memories shutterfly memories and yeah we just photo memories. Uh, we just had a moment that got me, me this week too so yeah. yeah my funk has been like multiple things i think are contributing to my funk so i had and you, you've already heard all this I had a day this week where I had to call David and I just said, like, can I come over because I need a hug and I need to vent. And um, I was having a very, very bad Libby day. Um, so my and I think I've said this before on one of our other live streams. But when my classroom at school, when we're in the library, I have to go down through the seventh grade hallway. And so I go back and forth and all the seventh graders are in the hall. And Libby would have been there. And it is the weirdest thing for me because I walk down the hall and I see all these girls standing at their lockers that look kind of like her. Mm -hmm. And I can picture exactly what she would look like. I just have this picture in my mind of her like on her tiptoes, mm -hmm. putting stuff in her locker. And I can just see her there plain as day. And it just gets me every time. And also when I'm in the library, study halls can come in and I see, I end up seeing a bunch of her friends um, that are in seventh grade and they all, you know, come up and give me a hug and say hi and whatever, which is awesome. But it's also, it's a struggle. Like it's a struggle to see, there are just, there were so many reminders of her this week and what she should be doing. And I really miss not being able, I, we were both looking so forward to her being in the middle school with me so that I could see her throughout the day. And, and not being able to do that is just really, really hard. So that was definitely one factor of the funk. The second was that I've been sick for like a week now and I can't figure out how to shake it. And every time I think it's getting better, it kind of comes back. So I took off work one day, but I don't have a lot of sick days left. So I'm trying not to take off of work, which is probably, I should probably just take off and rest, but it's... I don't want to take unpaid days. So um, 
I've just been forcing myself to go to work, even though I haven't felt great. So, and I'm not even sure what it is. Like it was, I thought it was a stomach bug because I was like sick to my stomach a lot, feeling like nauseous. And I've had a headache for like a week straight and I've just been super tired and like my bones ache. Somebody said it might be the flu. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it, yeah, it's, it's lingering. And then yesterday I told you I was trying to do stuff around the house and like be productive. And I had to sit down because I've just been like super weak and like shaky, <laughs> not able to do much. So that has been another funk factor. And if you don't mind me rambling more, there's one more thing that is my funk factor. And that is the book. And you're going to yell at me for this. Probably. <laughs> but I'm, I'm beating myself up about the book. It, it, did not do nearly as well as I was hoping it would. And in other words, it wasn't a New York Times bestseller. No, probably. not even it wasn't even an Amazon bestseller. When the it's a very specific genre. It's, when the ebook you know, came out, it <clears throat> it went to number one. Like the day that the ebook was released, it went up to be like a number one bestseller and in agree. ebooks in in grief and yeah, in yes. like the grief categories. But that was super exciting. <laughs> But I had so many people telling me that they didn't buy the ebook because they were waiting for the paperback to come out. And then the paperback came out and it's just been blah. Like I didn't get anywhere close to being at the top of the bestseller list in any of the categories. Honestly, not that many people have bought it, which have, has been it's been it's upsetting. You put a lot of work into it, and like I've done everything that people you know i researched all this stuff how to do well selling the book and did everything that i thought i was supposed to do and it just did not do that well and the other thing that's really frustrating is that i specifically did stuff so that i, that I would have reviews on amazon because i've explained before like that's basically what helps sell your book is if you have reviews on amazon so i had advanced readers where their whole job was to like write reviews on Amazon. And I had 27 people that read the book before it came out. And like nine out of the 27 wrote reviews. So that was super disappointing. It still only has 10 reviews right now. Anyway, it, yeah, I know. I'll write one later. Whining, crying. Yeah. <laughs> but it just, it's disappointing that it hasn't done as well as I was hoping. And just, yeah that's contributing to everything and it is it, it yeah it's kind of depressing because it is a lot of work and i spent a lot of money to get it published and it's i mean i'm always like super honest with everybody about how stuff works and it's i mean i've spent thousands like probably it's close to six thousand dollars between everything i had to pay for to get it published and so, <laughs> so far by royalties from book sales, it's three hundred and forty-seven dollars. So That's something you sold a book. <laughs> you wrote a book. You sold a book. Yeah. The problem is that I do not have. Like, I had to go into my savings for that, and like, I, I'm not made of money by any means. I'm not like doing super well, so it's stressful to me to spend that much money on something and then not even coming close to making it back. And I do love the fact that I have a book out there in the world. Like that is, that is important to me that now I can say like, it was a dream of mine and I did it and I wrote a book and I'm a published author and that's cool. But the money stuff is like wigging me out. And I had, I talked about it in a video and someone wrote and said like, you can't put a price on how much you're helping people and like, don't think about it that way. Think about it like you're helping people and that like has no value and people appreciate you and whatever. And that's so true. And like, I've been trying every time I get down on myself, I'm trying to remember that comment and saying like, <laughs> it's not about the money, but when you're stressed about money because you don't have a lot. And like, I did my tax return and, you know, spent so much money on the business and made like nothing that it, it does make you start to wonder like, is it, is it worth it? Is it worth doing all this when I'm, um, I am getting the return of helping people, but it's also stressing me out financially. So that's, yeah. I think too, you're going <clears> to, 
you you have to give this book time to get out into the grief world you know where it's again it's a very niche kind of yeah. um book so you have to be patient that uh once it kind of hits some of the therapists and therapists like it and therapists start recommending it to their clients and patients and whatever else you're gonna see that tick up you're problem <laughs> that you've always had uh -huh. as an individual <clears throat> is patience which you have zooch. so you just need to be patient you will you will sell more books i know it's a struggle right now but you'll sell more books and <clears throat> and libby would be proud of you regardless whether you sold one book or twenty thousand books yeah she would be proud of you and like you said, you're helping the people that do find it eventually and will find it are going to find it as a wonderful, honest read of grief. And, you know, some of the stuff you talk about in there with the trust method, it is something that is is helpful if you kind of go through those steps and and kind of self-evaluate, really, truly self-evaluate where you're at in your grief. Um, using some of your steps, it's going to be invaluable for some people. Thanks. All right. We've got comments. Hold on. I don't want to forget these people. All right. So Rachel says, look at it this way. The people that do have the book are being helped so much. Your experience and journey has been a godsend to me. Well, thank you, Rachel. See, yeah, I know. It, <laughs> and I know that. And I appreciate those comments so much because literally hearing comments like that, that is what keeps me going because... Otherwise, it would be so frustrating oh, doing what I do. Ricky, hi, Ricky. Ricky says, happy to finally catch you live. Thanks for joining. Ricky is my hairdresser. So all the people that comment that they think my hair is adorable, um, Ricky is responsible for that. She has been my hairstylist for like ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I honestly don't have, it's been like my whole adult life pretty much at this point. So she is a wonder stylist. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so yeah, Funk. Book not doing well. I have a random question. Again, if you guys are just joining us, my, my other guest canceled. So David is pinch hitting. We are just randomly talking about whatever you guys want to talk about. So if anyone has any questions or anything, throw them in the chat. We are happy to talk about whatever you want. So something totally random that I wanted to bring up that I've been thinking about. I started going on to TikTok and making TikTok videos and it's like a whole other world on TikTok. But what I've discovered on TikTok is filters and they have all these like crazy filters that you can use. So <laughs> there was one that was like a redhead filter that makes you into like this gorgeous redhead with like freckles and everything. And I keep running into these filters where you can put a picture of someone and it ages them. Like it goes through their ages and people are doing it like with their kids. So they'll take a picture of their baby and it'll give them AI generated pictures of their babies as they like grow up. How do you guys feel about that? <laughs> because I, there are times when I first saw it, I was like, ooh, like, do I want to try that with a picture of Libby? But I think we've talked about it before. Like, I, I don't want to. I'm scared. Like, I'm scared to do that. I don't know why, but like, one of the hardest things about losing a child is not seeing that child grow up and knowing what they would look like as they age. But there's something that creeps me out about an AI generated aging process. Yeah, and I think that's something that, you know, we talk about things that are causing that funk. Um, you know, for us right now, it's, it's dance season. Oh, and, yeah. And it's incredible to see in just the two years since Libby's passed, um, how much some of Libby's friends have grown and, you know, Libby was starting to kind of <clears throat> transfer from that baby look to that kind of teenage look mm -hmm. for sure. And even when I look back at her pictures, you know, that pop up and it's like, two years before she passed versus that last, you know, the last couple pictures, it's a huge difference. Yeah. And to see the girls right now and the difference that they just look so mature 
and it's just it then just it does it starts playing with your head like well what would libby look like right now like yeah. how, how tall would she be what will changes on her face would be happening um and <clears throat> it it is definitely one of those things that gets me often um yeah i have no interest i mean i do but i don't have interest in kind of doing that I feel like it would make thing. it harder. I feel like almost having, like right now, it's just my imagination, but right. I don't really know. I feel like actually seeing a picture of her aged would give me something more tangible to grieve, almost. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. It would just make it too, too real. Uh, I don't know, too. I think, I think I'd struggle with it if it, if I felt like it didn't look like yeah. what I thought it yeah. would look like. Um. Like, no, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> I know, you know yeah. I don't know. It, it's one of those that it does intrigue me, but at the same time, I, I also don't want to, I guess, start thinking of her in that picture. Like, if yeah. I would see that picture of her aged, and that would start being the image versus the real Libby. Yeah. And and I don't, I don't like that idea either. So. Agreed. But. I don't know. Do you guys have an opinion one way or the other on AI? Yeah. <laughs> AI generated stuff. I don't know. It yeah, it kind of weirds me out. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad for the grief world. You know, it's always fun to play with it if you're still alive. But from a grief standpoint, I'm not sure that's a a great idea. I, I see it because I'm in. Couldn't be. I don't know. I'm in like grief group. I'm in a lot of different grief groups on online like facebook and stuff like that just to kind of see what people are talking about mm. and it has come up a lot like tons of people are posting in those groups like here's a picture of the person i lost can you like fix it up can you do stuff to it can you put wings on it can you whatever and i don't know i'm just like there's just something I guess not with a picture where they're the same age, like doing, I mean, I've done that with Libby, like with some of her pictures where I've, I don't know, like done stuff to them, <clears throat> but it, it, it's her, you know, it's an actual picture of her. It's not like a generated picture of her, but mm -hmm. I think people, there are a lot of people that do that. And I feel like it would just make it harder somehow. But yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. Personally, I, I struggle oh. with it. Did you see, sorry, to interrupt, did you see, because it just reminded me, I saw something in an article uh, the other day where they've come out with, there's a company that makes videos. Like you can send this company pictures or if you have like video recordings, so like we could send a pic, and this is for anyone, whether it's a child or like if you lost your husband or a parent or whatever, actually that was it was a parent that they talked about in the article where this person created it because they lost their dad and they had videos of their dad and like voicemail messages and something like that. And they send it to this company and this company makes almost like an AI I think it did version mm -hmm. of something your person that. that you lost. And they can like, they I'm like, call, the yes, they call, yeah. like they can call you and mm -hmm. leave messages with that person's voice and stuff it, like how creepy is that i don't know i feel like that would just i wouldn't like it personally but oh my god like i feel like that would just prolong i think the grieving process yeah i think that's where people that are struggling to work their way through the grieving process are doing something like that where it's like oh no i want to see i want to see what it would be like i still want to have them there and we all still want to have them there but yeah, I think that would continue the process of not being able to really yeah. move past. Yeah, I just feel things. like that's so unhealthy. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a that's a tough one too. Because yeah, I did see that. I think somebody. I think I saw just a picture. I didn't. I didn't see videos, but I saw like taking a family photo and then inserting dad. You know, that passed yeah. away. Like, no, this is like a legit. Like they can make an AI person. Like yeah. they would take a picture. And then the voice from the video and like, like they do with movies, like mm -hmm. with CGI where they insert the characters and they age them and whatever, right. like they actually make like an AI yeah. 
yeah. version of your person. Could you imagine like getting a video sent to you of like Libby talking to you and you can like talk to, oh, that creeps me out. Yeah. I, I don't know how people would ever, not that you ever get over your person or your grief, but you could never move forward. Like I imagine people would just be stuck staying in their houses, like constantly watching videos, trying to like have conversations mm -hmm. with the person that they lost, mm -hmm. but they're not real. That's the thing. Like it's not real. Well, and what was that movie we watched recently where the mom was doing that? The mom, they'd lost the, Oh, the, the line. Um, what was it? Mending the line. Yes. Um, there was a mom in there and she was just cons constantly playing his old high school football videos and, you know, just, and it, I think that's what you're talking about. Like yeah. it would just keep you in that perpetual loop of, of never being able to move past it. And that's, yeah. that's what she was struggling with. And she was pulling in the fiance of the, uh, of the person that passed and the fiance is trying to move on and realizing this is toxic to mm -hmm. be with this woman who is constantly here. Look at this, look at this here, take this, you know, people grieve in their own way. You know, it's, it's very different for everyone, but I think, and I, I'm not in this place, but for people that maybe are in that place that are stuck, um, I think that is one of the reasons that people get yeah. stuck is just constantly kind of going through that kind of stuff over and over and over again. And it does make a difference. Like if you look at me with just this week, like seeing all of Libby's friends and like having those reminders mm -hmm. of her, like supposed to being at school, you know, that it makes it so much harder. Yeah. All right. I want to get some comments here. So Rachel says, oh, that's creepy to me. Yeah. Right. Rachel, it creeps me mm -hmm. out too. Big time. I don't know. I can't. Oh. That it just rubs me the wrong way. Okay, so Rachel says, one thing I haven't experienced is anger for my loss, everything but that, which is okay. Like you mm -hmm. don't, I mean, there's no set. <laughs> you don't have to experience anger. If you haven't, that's good. Um, I, you know. I go back and forth. Yeah. Like I, I, had a, <clears throat> I had a moment this past week where, and I had told you about it, but uh, again, pictures popped up and it just popped up and I just looked at Libby and I was like, what the hell? Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> why did this, why did this have to happen? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's okay. It's not okay, but you know what I mean? I'm sorry. Yeah. It, and it pisses you off. It's like, why? Why her? Why? Yeah. <clears throat> There's. Why my person? It. It just, it, it felt very unreal mm -hmm. again. It was like, wait, why is she not here? Like, this is freaking crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. So did you feel angry? I, I did <clears throat> a little bit. You know, it's, it's kind of that disbelief, anger, like this isn't right. Like there's so many shitty people in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's so true. You know, I, I, why this 10 year old beautiful light was taken away is, is just beyond me. And that's where, you know, again, we're not religious. So, you know, the people that say it was God's plan, well, shit, <laughs> that's a, God needs to reevaluate his plan mm -hmm. if he took such a wonderful person out of our lives and out of the lives of so many people. Um, it just is, it's just, it just hit me and it was like a freaking gut punch of, yeah, anger and, and just disbelief. Yeah. Like it was, it's, it's one of those moments where, you know, you think you're doing fine and then it's like, Holy shit, she's not coming back. Yeah. And ugh, ugh, I'm gonna drink so I don't cry. That's okay. You can cry. It's all good. We're all about sharing our emotions here. Okay. I want to say Toinette. Am I saying that correctly? I don't know if I'm not. I'm sorry. I experience that all the time. I wonder why my husband is gone and how this could happen. A lot of the time I feel like I'm in a dream waiting to wake up and find him there hundred percent like that, that is exactly 
how it is. And it doesn't matter how far along you are either. Like yeah. you could just be going about your day and then it is just some random thing that is such a gut punch that it's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, this is real. Like they are really, I think those are the hardest moments, like you said, mm -hmm. where it's like, she's not coming back. Mm -hmm. Like she, <clears throat> she's really gone and yeah. it's and awful. Uh, yeah. And it's like, you always know it, but then there's just times where it just, for me, it's like, a, it, I always describe it. Like, it feels like someone is squeezing my heart, like my chest. I feel it in my chest. Like I get cold and I feel like something is squeezing my chest and it is just like, oh my God, like this is real. This, this really happened to us. Yeah. And I, I, <clears throat> yeah. And it was weird because I haven't had that type of a feeling in yeah. a long time. And for whatever reason, and I, I honestly, I can't remember the picture that, that brought that up because it wasn't the one I showed you. We had, Brooke and I both separately got memories about mm. uh, a, a picture memory of Libby and curlers, and I completely freaking lost it uh, just sitting on my sofa. Um, when and I, I was at work, and, and I was just staring at this photo of her and these adorable little yeah. curlers. Oh, good. I said Toinette's name perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I was hoping I wouldn't mess yeah. that up. All right. So Rachel says, another thing that is frustrating is two of my other children won't talk about their brother. And sometimes I yearn to, but they cut me off. Probably what's, the what's age the of age. Yeah, yeah. How old are they? Because weirdly, my son, Max, who was driving the car um, when Libby died, he he and I are actually both writing a chapter for a book that's coming out called Faces of Grief. And uh, he sent me his chapter to read. She said they're adults. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's harder because ours are teenagers and, and teenagers yeah. are kind of notorious for not talking about things. But they're all, are they men? We're, yeah. We're, <laughs> well, we're, and were they close to like how close were they with? with uh your, yeah your what i was child. saying about the the so i read max's chapter and that was really hard to read because i felt like it was very detached and clinical you said. clinical is the word that i used for it because he was describing the mm -hmm. accident and what happened and how he felt and everything was just very clinical and sounded almost cold and it was hard to read <laughs> because it's so emotional for me but he's he's not like that like he has trouble crying um and he'll talk about things but he doesn't go out of his way to talk about things and yeah it's sometimes our kids just do. Rachel, what I'll say is that what he told me and actually part of what he wrote in his chapter was that he was hesitant to bring things up because of us. He was very worried about us and how we would react. And so he didn't talk about Libby specifically because he didn't want to upset us. The part about them cutting you off, I'm not sure. Maybe they just don't want to... That's a shame, honestly. Like Max said with us that he, like we would try to stay strong and not like lose it in front of them. And I know he would, you know, if I'd vent to him, like I, I'd apologize. And and he said, don't worry about it. Like don't, like he didn't mind me venting. He didn't mind seeing us crying because he knew that it was healthy. But on the flip side of that, I also think he has guilt that he's causing yeah. that or he's he was partly to blame for that loss you know i think that's how he thinks of it as well but i also don't think he's max is a big giant teddy bear you know he, he's great but he's uncomfortable in that situation yeah. too of of kind of you know not that he won't give us a hug. He just doesn't know what to say. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So Rachel says it's one male and one female, and they were very close to their brother. Yeah. Uh, it might just be hard. Yeah. I mean, for it would them. be interesting to see, you know, if you feel like they have um, processed their grief properly. I don't know how long 
either, but, um, you know, whether or not they're still in the process of trying to process their own grief and maybe they're just not ready to talk about it yet. Um, or if they're, it'd be interesting if you could figure out if they were actually talking about it between them, because mm -hmm. maybe they're trying to do a similar thing that Max is doing, which is protecting you, which is why they're trying to cut you off. I don't know. You know there's I a think lot of factors. There are a lot of factors and it, it's honestly just people's personality. Like I would try not to take it personally. Yeah. Our family, I mean, like no one really goes out of their <laughs> way. We talk mm. about Libby way more than anybody else. Like the boys would probably not bring it up really if it weren't for us. And we're the ones who initiate doing all of the things in honor of Libby. And they'll go along with us and they'll do stuff, but they're not bringing it up on their own. Right. And like I, my brother, for example, I talk about him a lot because he he shuts down. Like if I if I start saying something about Libby, he he will shut it down. He'll he'll say like I don't want to talk about that or like why you know why do you have to bring her up all the time? <laughs> well, because I think about her all the time and she's my daughter. But I do have to remember like it is for some people they don't want to be reminded of the bad shit that happens. Like they, d some people are just more comfortable. I'm not saying it's healthy because I right. don't think it is, yeah. but some people are much more comfortable just not thinking about it or not bringing it up. And yeah. maybe they just process in other ways. But like with Grayson, our son Grayson, we didn't think he was talking to anyone about it, but then we found out he was talking to his close friends, yep. <clears throat> which then made us feel better. He didn't want to talk about it with us but he did talk about it with someone else, which was a little comforting. So yeah, there's so many factors there, but, um, okay. So Rachel says, my daughter was first to see him in the hospital deceased, maybe just too hard. We're a close family. So it, it might be too painful. Mm. Yeah. It might be too hard. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think time, you know, depending on the time frame too, how long it's been, um, again, people just, process very, very differently. Um, you know, I was talking to my mom the other day and, and my, my aunt actually lost her son, um, about a year or so. Was it a year? No, maybe it's just I think it's a little over a year. No, 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 no. Well, I meant time-wise in between Libby and Keith passing. Oh. It, it really wasn't that long. Um, and she was, you know, she is still, car rides. She can't do car rides by herself. If she's by herself in a car, she just freaking cries because the mind is just constantly going. That is and my number one crying place. Yeah. It's same. It's, it's one of those when you're, again, you should be paying attention to the road and all that, but our minds wander when we have that, you know, driving is, you can kind of do that and think. And, um, so she is struggling with that. And, 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 She's coming up on, you know, two years. Yeah, it'll be two years this August, I think. So she is still doing that. Mm -hmm. It's still fresh. Some people can still be doing that five years down the road. And other people are six months in and they're kind of okay or seem okay, maybe. Um, it is all just how people process their their grief and... um it takes time. I think, yeah. I think, I think it takes time. And I think it also takes, you know, again, going back to Brooke's book and some of the things that identifying where you're at and, and what helps you and what doesn't help you. That is a big thing. We talked about, you know, somebody that's playing a video and just constantly watching videos of their person on loop. They're going to struggle to get past it um, versus somebody who is, understanding and kind of identifying here are the things that I'm struggling with and how do I, how do I work on those? Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna go a little faster. So maybe your kids are just struggling and, with some of those problems. And Rachel just commented that it's, it's only been a little over a year. Uh, so yeah. it is still yeah, very really early. early and fresh and just give it time and hang in there. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, it that is, is, that is, <clears throat> And, and I'd love to tell you it's going to get easier soon, but um, we're finding second year was pretty bad, but third year, is, it seems seems like it's going in reverse for us a it little is. bit at times. 
grief is so, so weird and that's the thing but you just have to remember that it's normal like everything's normal and it's okay like part of it you you feel like am i doing something wrong am i like not <laughs> like me i i this is what i do as like a second job you know what i mean and i know all about grief i know what i'm feeling is normal and i feel like oh my gosh like am i doing something wrong here that i i am 100 in a funk and depressed right now yeah. and stuff with libby is worse for me right now and i just have to keep reminding myself <clears throat> that it's normal and what gets me through is knowing that it's not going to be like this forever like there because this has happened before this time of year tends to be bad for us because it's the accident time it is dance season there are a ton of memories from this time of year that make it difficult we're in the process of planning our big bingo basket bingo event for the live like libby charity that we run and it is just like a bombardment of reminders that make this part of the year really tough and i just have to keep telling myself like even though it feels like i'm going backwards that it it will go forward again <laughs> and like you just have to kind of hang in there and not let yourself be taken under like feel your feelings they're valid but don't lose hope that it's going to be like this yeah. forever like it's yeah. the waves this is a this is the wave that's taking us under we will bob back up to the surface eventually but just do the best you can while you're under <laughs> yeah i guess yeah so that's yeah, the i mean bye it rachel is. rachel said she has to go mm -hmm. so bye rachel thank you for all your awesome comments yeah. giving us stuff to talk about in our <laughs> unplanned random podcast episode here and the appropriate last name too funk yes oh my gosh yeah <laughs> rachel's last name is funk this is our funk episode so that was perfect actually i didn't even notice that <laughs> that is perfect that our number one commenter today is is named funk <sighs> All right, we're at 37 minutes. Does anyone else out there have anything else that they want us to talk yeah, about? I, guess it, it, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of people on, but you know, you can always send questions to Brooke after the fact whenever you're watching this, but what are some of the things that people do to try and help themselves when they do feel these, feel these episodes of funk going on? And how do you kind of work yourself out of it? What are some things that work for you and things that don't work for you? Brooke's got a whole list of them in her book. Right. Thanks. Things you keep you keep like right. <laughs> we gotta get those sales up. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, that, yeah. I, I do think it's helpful I, though. That's, it, the thing. that's why I'm frustrated that's the, that it's not selling because I feel I put a lot of heart into it. But but you're like I said, it's a very niche group, and and people in this country are not comfortable talking about grief in yeah. the open so the people that are looking for your book are that small group that are looking for help um we all grieve but out of all of us that grieve there's only a certain amount of people that will actually go out and seek help on those things yeah. and there's so many other people that just bury it because that's what we do in our society it's yeah. just bury sure. um our feelings so well thank you till it gets out there but yes brooke's got a whole thing it's a, like a whole page in the book. I can't, I don't have the book here, but it's a it's whole okay. page of things <laughs> like, you know, baking or whatever it is. Um, you know, you got to find some. I spent all day yesterday baking cook. Well, not all day yesterday, but most of the afternoon baking cookies. And, and it brought up. He brought them for me. Yeah. Brought up a lot of, taste tests. a lot of, uh, you know, feelings because that was something that Libby and I love doing together. And, and she was hitting that point where I was just basically there to help guide. And Libby was making the cookies. The only part that I did was mixing the batter when it got super thick. She, and she couldn't cooking. She couldn't uh, mix it anymore, but um, they are really good. <laughs> yeah. mm, Thank you. Pretty good. They're really but, good. Um, yeah. Just find what, find what, uh, what kind of helps but it'd be interesting to see if other people have certain things that they do when they notice they're going into that punk time. yeah i do so things that i do if, if you want ideas um worry about book sales worry... <laughs> clean i clean 
I absolutely do. And yeah, he yelled at me because I, I tried to do too much. I was, like I said, I was sick all week. And then Saturday I got up and I am terrible at just relaxing. Like I feel lazy. I feel like I need to be doing something. That's probably from my mother. But I, but I think that also helps you. So I started doing too. spring cleaning stuff and mm -hmm. I feel better when I do that. Like I feel if I wouldn't have been sick, my problem was that I ended up getting really shaky and sick. Um, <clears throat> so I had to sit down <laughs> and sometimes I, I'm getting better at listening to my body and my brain when I need to do that stuff. But yeah, cleaning weirdly helps me. It helps me feel like I've accomplished something and I feel better about my space. So that is a big one for me. And I love cooking. So I definitely, I baked a bunch of stuff this weekend. Um, reading for me because it takes my mind off of things. Um, I am a binge show watcher. So if I find something that I really, really like, I will just try to relax. I love movies and, and TV. So I'm a movie watcher. All right. I'm watching Downton Abbey right now for the third time. So making my way through all the Downton Abbey episodes, um, walking. I, it's really hard for me because I know how important exercise is and getting outside, but it is not something that I enjoy naturally. So I have to make myself do it. So like yesterday, I didn't want to go out at all. I didn't really want to do much of anything but I forced myself in between one of my Downton Abbey episodes to get up and put shoes on. And I walked around my neighborhood and I felt so much better once I did that. But I had to make myself do that because it's not something that I want to naturally do, but I knew it would be good for me. Yeah. Um, it's like I was saying with the soccer, it's the same thing. Like once I get out there and I do it, I enjoy it. Like, yeah. Today, driving over here and, and doing some stuff, it's a gorgeous day here today. Like, I'm not even wearing a jacket. I normally wear a jacket. Um, but it's like, oh, man, I really wish I had time to go do a hike or something today. Um, unfortunately, I did nothing yesterday other than make cookies. So I got stuff to do today. But, it worked uh, out for me because yeah. they're delicious. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, sorry, I want to get to some of the comments mm -hmm. that we are missing here because we're coming up on 45 minutes. So, Dar says, I appreciate this reassurance. I find going day by day and not projecting the future too much. Yes. That's me. I say, That's <laughs> definitely him. I do say that all the time, like one step at a time. It's funny because one of my students um, is actually grieving her, her grandmother and she listens to all my stuff. And she was like, my two favorite sayings of yours now that I try to follow are one day at a time and or just keep going like day by day. And the other one is keep on keeping on. <laughs> As I say that a lot, just keep on keeping on, like just do little by little day by day. And that is 100 percent true and dar also says i'll definitely be ordering your book thank you i appreciate people. it if now. you do enjoy it please leave a review on amazon because man that is definitely what helps all right wake and makes i love that name by the way wake and make why why do we bury our feelings i feel as if i'm not even allowed to talk about my daughter yeah because People are just uncomfortable yeah. with death. And so many people, I think, feel like if they bring it up with us, that it's going to upset us. When I tell people all the time, it's the opposite. Yeah. I love talking about the people that I've lost. You know, it yeah. helps me to be able to talk about it. But there are still people that feel more comfortable. Well, they I feel think, uncomfortable talking about it. I think it. most people, too, like like you said, if, if you're going to upset somebody, but you know, it doesn't matter if I start to tear up or whatever, when I'm talking about my daughter, it's because I love my daughter. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not about you bringing it up and bringing up bad feelings. It's about, Oh my gosh, this is great. I get to talk about my daughter again. Yeah. And I love doing that. I love hearing the stories that other people had that I had no idea happened. Yeah. Um, those are some of the best and it could be something stupid. Like, you know, oh, we went to the park and we swang on a, or we were swinging and it was the greatest time. You know, that's simple, but 
we love hearing that yeah. kind of stuff. So, but yeah, it's definitely in this society, people just are not comfortable. I'm hoping that it's changing say. and getting yeah. a little bit better, but man. Uh, so Wake and Make also says, when my daughter died the next day, I was just cleaning everything. That's all I could think to do for some reason. Uh, yeah. Just Raising my hand. I am, I am an anger. I'm an emotional cleaner. Um, I'm going to trademark that. Is that a thing? I don't know. But yeah, I'm a hundred percent an emotional cleaner. Um, when we used to fight <laughs> when we were married, that was what I did. I would just clean like i would rage clean <laughs> i'm a rage cleaner i am a depression cleaner you know what there are worse things that you could do so i say clean anything you want to clean because that is honestly there are healthy ways to deal with things and there are unhealthy ways and i think cleaning your feelings is an extremely healthy way to deal with things i've always been like that though yeah. haven't i I go yeah, and no, I think of it. I'm going to invite you over to my house and yeah. you off. get my house <laughs> clean. That'll be great. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. Start that... one in the bathroom first because it doesn't need anything again. <laughs> Thanks. That's nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I totally get that. I mean, the day, the day after, the next day, you were cleaning everything. I can't even remember the day. Um, like, Oh my God, I was just numb. Well, we and we had, well, I we mean, had Max. Yeah, we had Max. We were dealing deal with, with Max but... as well and the worry with him. But yeah. But I did I, the same. I did kind of along the same lines where yeah. I just, because I dove immediately into, okay, what needs done? Right. So I dove into planning the memorial service and putting together dance videos and whatever. Like I buried myself in, right. in working Worked in a separate way. Work, yeah, yes. It wasn't cleaning per se, but it was, <clears throat> yeah. 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 But yeah, everyone handles things differently, but I think cleaning is a healthy way to, yeah. I yeah, could be getting drunk and, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I don't drink, so that doesn't make sense. But, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it could be worse. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Cleaning, cleaning and baking. There's worse things you could do. Definitely worse things you could do. Mm. All right. We're at 47 minutes. We feeling good? Yeah. All right. A little less of a funk, sure. Actually, yeah. No. So again, it's it it's helps. about it's about just getting some of that stuff out there and just having that conversation, you know, seeing the other people that are, you know, doing the same thing we are. It's just, it's a struggle. You know, you talk about day to day or getting on to getting on or whatever, you know, um, the thing I used to say is I'm second to second, you know, when it first happened, mm -hmm. it was, I'm second to second right now. People ask how I'm doing I'm second to second. And then it became minute to minute. And, um, uh, then it was hour to hour and day to day, you know, and you eventually get, it, it does get better, but, um, you know, I just had a, a friend that I used to work with her son just passed and, you know, again, grief, grief is not, does not have an age limit. She, she's an older woman and then has, you know, or I think her son was in her fifties. It doesn't change anything. It's still a loss and it still impacts you. And, how you deal with those first couple of days is literally just one second, to one second, trying to figure out what the next step is. Um, as Dar said, you know, just um, kind of don't plan too far in the future. Just take it one moment at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I had a moment. This is totally random, but it just <laughs> reminded me that it doesn't matter who it is or how old they were or whatever, but just not even about child loss. My dad, I, I was in the grocery store and they started playing a song in the grocery store that he always used to sing. And I, could, I, don't, I forget who it's by. It's called Maria. And it's like Maria and he uh, clear as day. Like I was just walking down the aisle and that came on and I could hear him perfectly and like see him singing that song. And man, that just hit me too. And it was just, I started crying, like not like sobbing, but I teared up and I was just like, oh, hi, dad. <laughs> and I don't really think my dad is there. They just happened to play that song. 
but it was just like, oh, and it was almost because I'm so overwhelmed by the loss of Libby that I say all the time, I still have not properly grieved my parents mm -hmm. because Libby's loss overwhelmed me so much. So that was almost like, look, I'm, <laughs> that was almost like a, like, Oh, yeah. just like a moment where I was like, Oh, I miss my dad. Like yeah. I'm. And that's been hitting you a lot lately, especially with well, the book because he would have, you know, he would have loved that you were, you know, finally published and stuff like that. So. Yeah. yeah. No, man. It's. What? Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That was a music. Music does that, doesn't it? Yeah. Music mm. got me in the store about three months ago. I just. I'm usually pretty good. And then a Lewis Capaldi song that Libby and I oh. always listened to yeah. came on. And for whatever reason, it was almost instantaneous. First couple of notes that I heard. And I just, I knew I was going to lose it. And, you know, Max was with me. We were at the store together and I just found a, an aisle and kind of slumped over my cart and just started bawling. I mean, you just don't know when it's going to hit you. And that's that was kind of a first one. I've teared up, but not kind of lost it the way I did mm -hmm. in the store because of music. Yeah. I still struggle to listen to music oh. because it was such a big part of I can't, Libby and I. Mm, nope. Yeah. I The only stuff that I listen to now, I've switched to mostly listening to audiobooks. But the only music that I listen to is stuff that I don't really have a connection with Lib. Yeah. Because music was such a bit I know for you too music was such a big part of that relationship mm -hmm. and <laughs> I find myself listening to a lot of the stuff I listened to in high school if yeah I do listen to stuff things that yeah like I said didn't necessarily connect yes um but yeah you know what I heard the other day mm -hmm. I was in my bedroom and all of a sudden I hear freaking Hamilton playing from the bathroom oh. Grayson was listening to Hamilton no oh. yeah so what? Again, yeah, it was kind of a weird, and I don't know if it was a remix or something. It was kind of I couldn't hear all Aww. of it, but yeah, that and Libby loved Hamilton. Libby was obsessed with Hamilton. I almost thought about like oh, and and of course too, I'm getting ads on my feeds and stuff right now because Hamilton I think is coming to the Hershey Theater. Yeah, and it's like oh, I That's would like so to go see that, that but I don't know if I can handle that <laughs> kind of thing, and yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, that makes my heart hurt. Yeah. But also, like, hap happy. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're we're <laughs> okay. So I will. I'm not going in order here. But Dar says exactly. Music is too activating. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. My dad. Not with my mom. I didn't have any musical memories with my mom. But my dad and I. Yacht rock. Anything yacht rock. So hard for me because of my dad. And Libby, God, just there's so many things with libs. Yeah. Um, okay. And then Dar also said earlier, I'm wondering if you could take time in other episodes to read excerpts of your book. I would be happy to do that. I, yeah. I mean, if you guys would like that, I would be very happy to do that. I am so paranoid about annoying people. <laughs> With like being salesy and like buy my book and advertising that I kind of, I have a schedule even that I use because I don't want to annoy people with book stuff. But um, Dar, actually right now on my, I don't know where you're watching this, but on my YouTube channel um, for the next couple of weeks, I'm kind of going through each of the letters in the trust method that I uh, created I also even hate saying that because, because there is no like system or method for dealing with grief. It's basically just stuff that I, that helped me and I put it all together in an easy to remember way, um, which is where the, the letters in trust came from. So I'm doing videos. I just did one. If you go, my last video on Thursday was on a T, which is tell your truths. Um, so you can see stuff there, but I would be happy to read excerpts or whatever you guys would want to see. Um, so yeah, if you would want to see that, I'd be happy to do it. I just don't want to be overly salesy and annoying. <laughs> Carissa, hi, Carissa, uh, says, hugs, Brooke, understandably, it's been hard to properly grieve your parents with the loss of Libby. Yeah, it's, 
unfortunately, it's not even close, really. Um, but with the book, the parent thing has definitely gotten me more than I thought it would. And Krista says, hi, David. Hi. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we're at 55 minutes. I think that's good for today. Thank you so much for people who wrote in comments. Yeah. That really helps because we really didn't have. No. No, it was a good discussion. It was. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel so much better. Mm -hmm. That was why, yeah. That's why I asked when the person canceled for today. I was like, hey, can you, do you mind coming over? Because I, I kind of felt like, especially with the book not doing well, I just sort of needed to vent and talk and mm -hmm. evidently tear up about my dad singing Maria. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, have a good week, guys. Um, I am not sure the person who is supposed to be here, um, we will reschedule. So I'm not sure if that's going to be next week or the following week, but we will be back with her. Um, Chris Rizzo, she's a actually a 9-11 survivor and has also been through a lot of grief stuff. So I feel like that'll be a really interesting interview. So please join me for that one. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it for this week. So thank you for joining us. Again, if you have any topics that you want me to cover, if you want David back for us to talk about anything, any questions you have, leave anything in the comments. Even if it's the replay, I still get all the comments. Um, and always write those down and take those to heart and use those to kind of plan what I do because we're here for you guys. So it's always good feeling like you're not alone. That's such a huge part of grief. It is. Yeah. Which is what we try to do. It's just yeah. let you know you're not crazy. What you're feeling is normal. <laughs> and you are not alone. Those are like the three key things, I think. Absolutely. All right. <clears throat> yep. You all right? Yeah. Oh, and, and by the way, David was drinking chocolate milk today and not tea. Good job. I just haven't found water for my hot water. Oh. Yet. Uh, so. All we'll right. Get there. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. See you, everybody. Bye.